if we could get someone to share the uh, the agenda, that would be that would be great. And so we have recurring this particular uh, this particular event, um, which occurs every Tuesday at this time. We have the NSM document call, which occurs every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and the NSM use case, which occurs every second, fourth, and fifth Monday at 8 a.m. We also have the CNCF Telecom User Group uh, that we attend, which occurs on the first and third Monday. This Monday, we should have a Telecom User Group call coming up. The link is posted on the agenda notes. Uh, we also have a uh, telecom user group kickoff uh, meeting coming up in Shanghai, China, and that'll be on May 23rd at 12.30 p.m. Sorry, at 11.05 p.m., and it'll last for an hour, for roughly an hour and a half. We, there is also a CNCF networking working group that occurs every two weeks on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, we have Cisco Live going on um, right now, and uh, where Sergey is leading a one-hour breakdown of NSM, and that is going to occur tomorrow. Uh, does Does anyone know where Cisco Live is is located as well, or is that a uh, is that a podcast? <laughs> Uh, no, Cisco Live is, where is Cisco Live? I want to say San Diego, but maybe I'm misremembering. Um, it's currently happening, yeah, in San Diego right now. I don't know what the deal is on the posting of videos, but we can definitely find out. Cool. We also have KubeCon China coming up on June 25th through June 26th, uh, where we talk about in September 19th through 21st. You're breaking up really badly. For you. um, Your audio is breaking up really badly. At least here. Is it breaking up for other um, people? It, it probably is. I just got a message saying my internet connection is unstable. Oh, joy. That's do you, awesome. take, do you want to take over for a short while and I will switch to a different internet connection? <clears throat> sure, absolutely. Um, so let's see, we were talking about KubeCon China. Yes. <clears throat> so we do have an intro maintainer track taking place at KubeCon China uh, that Frederick and Nikolai will be giving. So please, if you're going to be going to KubeCon China, do turn out for that. Um, we have, there's an upcoming event, DPDK user space that's coming up in Bordeaux, France. I don't know that we have anything directly NSM related going on there, but definitely good folks. Um, Open Source Networking Summit Europe is coming up in Antwerp, Belgium. Uh, that CFP is still, for a tiny while, still open. Um, and so if, if folks would like to go and submit an NSM related talk there, we would strongly encourage that. Um, so just an update, yeah, uh, we are planning, uh, uh, me and Taylor, to oh, perfect. Uh, do something related to the, uh, let's say, NSM enablement in the CCNF testbed, let's say. Perfect. That's excellent. So uh, you're, you're going to oh, submit that and hopefully it'll get accepted. Yeah, and also uh, Radoslav, who is I guess not on the call, he he is going to um, to post a, a talk about uh, his experience with bringing up uh, with like enabling the forwarder with the pure kernel, you know, kernel based implementation, uh, which is still ongoing. But you know how <laughs> how these things work. <laughs> No, but, that, but it, it, it puts a deadline on it for him, right? Because yeah, he's got to get together least, yes, yeah. and actually give the talk. Yeah. Um, I, I, it was uh, uh, conference-driven development, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm very familiar. Like, you know, it, a tremendous percentage of my life in the last half decade has been driven by conference-driven development. <laughs> um, so 
<clears throat> yeah, this is this is that's also a good idea. I mean, the good news is there's a very high probability of acceptance. I think, generally speaking, network service mesh talks have been some of the most highly attended uh, and um, you know basically most looked forward to talks at Open Source Network Summit. So I think we got a very good chance of of being accepted there. <clears throat> cool, awesome, um, and then. You know, and also on the, that whole work, you know, Radislav has been doing great work at making sure we got proper uh, separation between things so that, that, you know, the promise of the APIs for the forward are being replaceable are actually true. I think the last one he found was, was some binding in the integration test, which means that he, if he's down to that point, then good progress is being made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's on one hand, uh, yes, there has been some, some bindings here and there, but on the other hand, uh, like uh, it really helps that the design was made right from the start to have the separation. So some things have leaked over time, but not really like a huge deal, like, you know, refactoring. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to view it this way, right? When I think about bugs, I think about design bugs and implementation bugs. Yeah. Implementation bugs, I'm not super concerned about. Those just uh -huh. get fixed. Yeah. Design bugs terrify me because design bugs typically get harder and harder to fix with time. Um, and so the fact that he's not hitting any serious design bugs is really no, comforting. No, no, no. So. Okay, so fun. Cool, cool. So we've got KubeCon North America coming up in San Diego in late November. And that CFP closes July 12th. We, oh. we really probably, cool. I know in the past what we've done for KubeCon is we've often put together a page as a community where we sort of brainstorm together on talks that we can, you know, we can various people can propose. We're probably going to want to start doing that here again for KubeCon North America. Which, um, yeah, you know, no time actually. I was thinking that it's kind of throughout summer, but huh, yeah, this this. No, um, it's 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 close. Like, it, it's super for for those of us who've been doing this a long time. It's super hysterical because I think it was for KubeCon Austin. The CFP for KubeCon Austin was open for something like fourteen months. Yeah. Um, like I have no idea why it was super weird. Um, back in, you know, Kubecon Austin 2017. Um, and so it was just, it's funny that they've gotten to be this tight, but you know, it, it's a yeah. great conference and a really good set of audience. We had a really good time at Kubecon EU and Kubecon North America the last couple of times. So, yeah. So, I mean, just about the ideas, uh, like, as we said already, I would really, really want to go for a longer, like single longer session than the two shorter ones. But maybe that's, I mean, that's something that we... No, I mean, quite honestly, I see the wisdom in that suggestion. Um, and, and you know, that one we got a little bit more space and time on because that comes down to, as by virtue of being an, a CNCF project, we do get um, either two shorter or one longer slots at KubeCon for, for use by the project. Um, but I'd love to also get some things in through the normal CFP process. So, oh, by the way, before so, that... I don't know if we have added here, but there's an uh, open source summit uh, in Lyon, uh, in Europe, which is maybe before KubeCon North America, and I was planning to submit it by the end of June. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that added here. Uh, if somebody could, could get that out of here, that would be great. Um, open source yeah. summit, it used to be Linux summit, and now it's open source summit, and so the, the flavor's gotten a little bit broader. Um, the, the few times I've attended, I've been quite pleased with uh, open source summit. Um, it's a friendly bunch. Yeah, I've um, I have submitted uh, now that I have a connection again. Um, so I have submitted something to the DBDK user space in Bordeaux. Oh. So I put something there about integrating uh, the, in the integration story between NSM and DBDK in the same light as what I did at the Fido, except focuses on DBDK instead. So uh, I will let you know what happens if uh, or when I receive notice on that. Uh, actually, I think o o OSS is sometime October, maybe. It's not June. Yep. Cool. Um, and then <clears throat> we've also, somebody's listed out Edge Computing World in Mountain View, and that's still converging. <laughs> but probably a good place to talk as well. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as always, please add any events that you've got an actual confirmed NSM presence at. Please push a patch to the site so we can get them up there. Because um, that's we're trying to make that the, the point of reference for folks. 
Yeah, the edge computing world uh, hasn't been formally announced yet, uh, which is why the website is to is not to be announced by us. It's to be announced by the actual organizers. <laughs> <laughs> we're not tracking events that have yet to be announced. Is what you're telling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So, but uh, they asked me for help with um, like with their, there still be an inaugural, inaugural event and asked me for help to, uh, to get to, to get them to focus, what, what should they focus on and what should be, what should be accepted, which tracks should they have. So I'm, I'm helping out, helping them out with some of that stuff. So. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. So do you want to pick back up again, Frederick, now that you're back on the call? Sure, and uh, let me know if it's uh, acting up again. Uh, I'm now on my cell phone connection. Awesome. Uh, right. So we have the social media community team. Uh, Lucina, I think I saw you hop on, so you have the floor. Hello. Yes. Uh, this last week has been pretty productive for the N Service Mesh Twitter account. We gained six followers, followed 80 more people and accounts, and um, submitted 22 tweets and retweets. There were some interesting things um, that popped up. There was a request for, or a mention rather, of Network Service Mesh regarding the OVS Orbit podcast. There's also a lot of discussions about Service Mesh in general on Twitter. Uh, whenever I see something that looks interesting, I'll just post it into the Slack channel for anybody on the Slack channel to um, interact with or let me know if there's any way you would like me to interact with those things other than liking <laughs> or retweeting. <laughs> Happy to like and retweet. <laughs> yep, yep. No, so somebody should probably reach out to the OBS Orbit podcast guys. Um, you know, I, I, I think you're probably in a particularly good position, Nikolai, since they're also at VMware. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Fred has reached out and uh, I'm oh, cool. Excellent. there. Uh, right, Fred, because... Yeah, I yeah, okay. I, I dangled Nikolai in front and uh, they, they were very receptive. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure no, about being bait, but okay. <laughs> no, no, they were, uh, Ben, ben uh, has, has uh, I've, I've known him for a long time as well and he's um, he's been interested in new content and this is something that is obviously very new and I think the fact that both me and Nikolai know Ben relatively well is a, is a bonus. <laughs> okay, so. And he knows uh, about the network service mesh already? I think. He knows about you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I have no idea if he, if he knows about network service mesh, but I'm sure oh. between you and Frederick, you can fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, think, I think he knows of it, but I don't think he knows what it is. But, but I'm sure he's heard some some people speak about it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> okay, he knows what I'm doing. Let's say like this. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, and then there has been these um, uh, CNCF webinars that I have been pointed uh, to, and we had, I mean, we changed some messages with Lucina about it. And she was kind to find that we have two, uh, two ways to actually engage there. One is open a ticket and the other one is send an email. And um, I know someone told me that their schedule is pretty tight for the months to come, but maybe we can do something uh, like September, October or something like that. that. That's actually pretty good timing going into KubeCon, frankly. Um, and, and by then, hopefully, we'll have some of the inner domain things working, which would be kind of awesome. Um, so that, that's not bad timing for us, frankly. So uh, how do we want to approach this? Uh, like, um, I don't know, do you see, I, I haven't watched any of the webinars, uh, but uh, do we want to approach it like uh, the three of us, or we just elect someone that is uh, you know doing the webinar? What um, what do you guys see feasible? Um, 
I mean, so I, I think like the, the first step is, I think you've sort of already stepped up and taken a bit of ownership here, Nikolai. If you'd like okay. someone else to, we could get another volunteer. Oh, I will. Get it on their radar, um, you know, by opening a case with service task and just sort of, I presume there's a way to add in okay. other people involved. And then from there we can figure out sort of what the time frame would be and figure out what we want to focus on in that webinar when we get there. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's do this. I will, I will create the, the ticket. I mean, it's better to have it publicly available for everyone to see, otherwise with mails, you know, and yeah. Okay, so let's, let's do a ticket and have it. see. Good. Uh, yeah, I think you can always delegate it to, to somebody if someone wants to take over and do the actual content. So if someone wants to write a blog post or something similar, um, like, I, I think the ticket has to come from us, but I think that we could hand off the actual task to to mm -hmm. someone else and get and get their name on it. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, I think the only reason the request needs to come from you know Nikolai, Frederick, myself, or Andre is just because then they actually know we are representing the project. <laughs> it's asking a little bit for them to track all the participants in a project. They can usually just track the uh, the maintainers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, although I wouldn't mind if they if they left it open for people to post and then they can have us just review and say, yeah, that looks reasonable. They probably do. Uh, we should talk to them about how that works. Yeah, because I, I, I don't want to have to open a ticket for every single person who wants to who mm -hmm. talk. Because uh, it, it, it makes us the bottlenecks and, and we shouldn't be bottlenecking the community. Cool. Okay, release notes. Okay, so release notes. So I am going to uh, bring the release notes up to the next uh, document. Uh, but here's a here's a question: Do we have a do we have a tentative date on when the zero one zero release is going to occur? Um, no. Do we put this item until after we have the discussion of the Andromeda release? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a that's a good idea. Uh, but in short, um, I'm going to bring the release notes up to the documents call tomorrow and uh, get us start get us to start filling it out again uh, okay. for for the components. Okay, let's do that. Um, okay, so then uh, mm, let me take over for the. I mean, I'm not. There's nothing. I mean, I don't want to sh to share anything. I just. Let me let me talk you through what uh, what uh, what I think about the release currently. So the branch uh, was done last week, I think, or the week before that. Okay, I forgot already. Last last week, I think. Yeah. I know it seems like it is Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, then uh, there are some challenges there, like uh, our default. Um, um, I mean, we have a lot of um, assumptions within the the code, like uh, for example, not not the code itself, but uh, maybe the surrounding scripting, like um, um, our um, Helm charts. There's the version, but I think that by default they just default to latest. So you either need to specify it explicitly the version. Uh, so that's that's probably something that that we need to figure out because currently the situation is like this. So in the main branch, uh, everything is about um, latest, while in the branch we either go and manually or by or through a script just change everything to to the branch release, uh, or um, I don't know what are our, our other options. I mean, like uh, we can have some automation that actually tries to figure out, are you on a branch? And if you are on a branch, then it changes things. I don't know, because uh, it seems like there's a lot of manual work and if, oh, well, not, not a lot, but there's some manual work. And if there is manual work, then it's error prone, you know, people, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I mean, one of the other things I would suggest that we consider is right now we're dumping everything, including our CI stuff into the one great Docker yeah. uh, in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. And 
and it strikes me that that's an unfortunate historical accident. It would be really, really nice if we could get a separate um, network service mesh CI registry, clean out the old one and only put release things in the public facing registry. That would be great. That would be um, amazing. Do, so, and, and, and I know that there, so Frederick, you know the Docker space super well. Is there any reasonably automatable way to clean out old entries from old label entries from a Docker registry? <laughs> like, oh man, nine percent of them. <laughs> like, I, I know I can go through and click them one by one, <laughs> um, but that's that's. I, I've actually gotten to the point where I have briefly considered deleting the registry and then recreating the registry. I was, I was. Okay, maybe Fred is the right guy. I, what I managed to find out is there is some curl magic that you can send and it will do something. But yeah, there you could all there there is curl. Um, so basically, um, the Docker the Docker API Hub API is basically a um, a REST based interface, and so uh, we we could write a script that that does it rather than. And I'm sure somebody's written one on stuck it onto the internet. <laughs> some geese somewhere. Yeah, there'll, there'll be some because it's, there'll be others with the same. Uh, I, I think it comes down to uh, the Docker. Uh, it Docker gains more. Uh, like it's sort of like stars on on GitHub. You know, it's like how many stars you have, and it's like yeah, it is a metric of like your project is growing, but it's like. But there's other metrics you want to track instead, like downloads or or so on, depending on the type of your project. Mm. Uh, and it's the same with uh, with Docker. It's like okay, they can post like hey, we have these many million images and so on. But it's like you know, same. So it's, they they don't want to make it easy to delete everything. Yeah. Um, okay. So I mean, I guess that the first step would be: can we get our CI so that it publishes to a network nurse service mesh CI registry? I can go create one and get the credentials in place. Um, Cause that's sort of the first step. Once we've made that transition, then we can say, okay, how do we clean? What, what do we want to do about cleaning up the network service mesh repo? Uh, okay, that could be tricky because this means that, that we need to redirect uh, uh, like the tests and stuff. I mean, everything is essentially downloaded from, I mean, like we should be able to uh, Andre, how, how hard is it to redirect the test to a new registry? Shouldn't be uh, maybe a new violent. I don't remember. Should not be a problem actually, I think. Okay. Since uh, we could use uh, for tests, we could use a prefix or a registry uh, where you, we want to take artifacts. So for tests, I think it's easy. Yeah, I mean the the problem is with the testing only. Like everything else should will stay on the uh, let's say original the release registry. <laughs> if you want to call it like this. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's let's do the following. I'll take an action item to go create the uh, registry and the um, to go create the registry and get the credentials in to Circle CI, and then I'll you can open a ticket. They're all open a Jira issue to migrate over to using that. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's sort of a good first step towards actually getting the mechanics in place. Yeah. My, my suggestion would be we clean out the network service mesh repo that exists right now. We push whatever is a reasonable latest to latest just in case other people are kicking the tires so things won't break. Yeah. Um, you will get latest as soon as, in, as soon as you rerun the circle CI on master and then you get latest. That's yeah, yeah, but we'll, that latest will now be pushed up to the CI repo because we're. I think for the network service mesh repo, we only want to push the release things, right? Generally speaking. Oh no, no, latest should be no. I think that. I mean, so in the CI, we need to push only the images that we use within the testing, and then there should be latest, which actually reflects the status of the latest master. I think that this is the. the, the Okay, no, that, that's fair. So if you're saying have latest that reflects in this, that reflects uh, the latest master, I can live with that. That's perfectly okay with me. We just needed to actually come to agreement about that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with saying we'll always push the results of a successful master up as latest, and then we can just tag the things that are particular releases 
if people want to attach particular releases. That that seems okay to me. Totally good. Uh, then one more question, because I, now I have the release branch. And if I build something in the release branch, um, the, there are chances that I, I mean, I can push images there from the branch, but uh, because they're not tagged, I'm not pushing anything. So uh, does it make sense that we have the, the same way that we have latest reflecting master, does it make sense to have uh, a release branch named uh, like release dash 0 0.1 uh, images sitting there just reflecting the status of the latest? Uh, um, yes, branch. but I wouldn't name them that because that's going to make people think that it's actually a released image. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I could see like, um, I could see putting something in there. Yeah, that, that, that's, you don't want to call it latest as 0.1 because then people will think it's the latest and not the release. So I think we need to figure out the naming, but I, I, I think your general notion is correct. So which, uh, which repo is this? Is this like a, a test repo or is this an like actual release repo? <laughs> I think we were talking about the release repo because my yeah. initial question was for the release repo, we only put release artifacts in the release repo. And then we have the CI repo where we keep the other things. And Nikolai suggested that we have latest in the release repo be latest on master. Uh, is there actually well-established best practice here that you're aware of, Frederick? Yeah, so in the, in the main repo, uh, we want the, uh, the latest one, uh, the default repo, uh, just to be the production quality thing that we want people to ship with. Because what some people will do is they'll just tag, they won't even put a tag in, they'll just put uh, from network service mesh or they'll stick network service mesh without, a, without an actual version number. So we need to make sure we always give them the latest. Um, and uh, it's very common to see version numbers actually tagged. Like they'll tag it like version one, they'll use semantic versioning, so version one. 1.0 or 1.5 or whatever it is, and then uh, and then we can tag 1.5.1, 1.5.2, 1.5.3, uh, or, or so on. So they'll they'll typically tag the full version and then the version minus patch and version minus minor and patch. Uh, so that way they can peg to their to their comfort zone. Um, and beyond that. Uh, it's it's very similar. Like if you look at the the Go repo, that that's pretty much what they what they do. Uh, be, be beyond beyond that, I think we can uh, we can be more experimental with the the CI and uh, learn a little bit more. But I, I would definitely recommend trying to stick with that style in the in the main release repo. Okay. So the. Uh... Are you saying that there won't be any releases from the branch unless there is a tag in it? I mean, like we only release the tag release. So we have latest and then the actual semantic version tag uh, uh, releases from the release branch, but nothing in between. Yeah, but what, I, what I'm trying to remember uh, is whether latest uh, implied uh, default or whether there was a default tag. Uh, and that, that's what I'm trying to remember. Um, Oh. Latest, if it's from master, that's that's fine as long as it's not the the default branch, and so that's the one semantic that we need to to double check on. But I think I think colon default was the default branch, and, and colon latest is something that is arbitrary. But I, I think we actually do get people. I've seen a very common habit of people making latest the latest release version, <clears throat> and so you do get a lot of people who will simply point to latest expecting that kind of default behavior that you're referring to. Yeah, and I'd be more comfortable calling it, literally calling the branch master. So if you want master, peg to master. Don't, and Ooh, I think that'd be a little bit more clear. That, that's, that's, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> in fact, we could, uh, we could make it even more explicit and make it branch dash master, branch dash, dash um, d.0.1. That might be particularly clear. Yeah, and what's what's nice about um, ab about the version and numbers is that suppose that we release version two, right? And we're working on version three. Like default goes to two, but version three is uh, and master can be the same. And so, 
we can actually have master just point to uh, to three tag effectively, whatever is latest on the three. A little theory about tagging a release tag on something that's not released yet, though. Yeah, that that is true. It wouldn't. The the one problem that we'd run into that is is potential caching problems where someone pulled something and um, then once it's in the repo, there is a policy where well, I mean, uh, you can, push where you pull if unavailable. You can also run into a problem like a lot of times when I've gone to Docker, um, I will go and I will look for the latest release release looking tag and I will grab that. And if we put a release looking tag on something that is not actually a release thing, people can end up grabbing something that isn't a release thing thinking it is. Yeah, and that, that's why I would prefer that that stuff live in, uh, in another repo. But I think colon master should be, should be fine. Like it's, it's pretty clear what colon master is. And if you decide to use it, then yeah. so, you know what the implications are. Nikolai, how would you feel about the following, which is we have the CI repo, we have the release repo. In the release repo, latest points of the latest release artifact. We tag release things when they're actual releases, and we have a master tag to follow master. Um, and then for the throttle branches, do you mind the throttle branches uh, getting stuck in CI unpublish, in the CI repo unpublish, or what's your feeling and thought here? What are what are the throttle branches? Sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, things like. <laughs> The release slash zero dot one branch. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and they will live where? Sorry. In the CI repo. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine people wanting yes, to. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay, cool. cool. Awesome, uh, Andre. Do you have any thoughts on this, or does anybody else have any wisdom to share? No, uh, I'm okay. Cool. Sounds reasonable. Uh, a quick question. I want to be able to publish, uh, and I think that I'm, I already have put some code in place, to publish the, the images that I produce in the examples. Um, like my only wish is to have just the latest or the master ones. So does it make sense to put them in, in the main repo or we can have a separate example? I mean, I, I don't know. No, I, I think I think it makes sense as long as we don't expect any name collision with the example repo. I think it makes sense to follow exactly the same pattern for the example repo images, um, and you know, Oops. put, put the, the CI things in the and network service mesh CI registry. Put the release no, things. No, there are no CI things. No, no. I I tested everything only in Circle CI in kind. That's 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 good enough for me for okay. now. I don't, don't do any testing. So. Well, okay, that, that, that's 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 fine. So, I mean, you know, if they're actually release versions of those things, or if it's something that's chasing master, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable to follow the same convention we're talking All about. All the same. Okay, good, perfect. I, I, I like things that are consistent unless there are good reasons for them not to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Then, in this case, we we what we say is that there's not going to be any latest stack, well, unless and until we have release versions of the um, example. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I could easily see doing release versions of the example network service endpoints, yeah. but 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 I think latest should probably point to a release something. Generally speaking, at least in the network service mesh repo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. We are aligned there. It's good okay. to be in alignment. I like alignment. <laughs> yeah. Well, particularly alignment that comes from hashing through the issues and. Uh, I, I've got a good rule of thumb, which is if we arrive at a solution that is not the one that I would have proposed off the top of my head, we've probably given it good consideration. <laughs> so. Um, Anyone else want to dig in on this at all before we jump on to the next thing? Okay, the next thing is the roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, so I finally had a chance to actually watch through the full uh, uh, TUG kickoff meeting, where actually there was one ask from Dan about us having a roadmap doc, like mm -hmm. somewhere in the repo that we track what we plan to do in the next you know, three to six months. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would make sense to reflect this somehow in a in our spec and then probably link to it in the main readme just 
for the people yeah. to. So, I mean, one of the things I've been trying to do visually for that is if you go down to the attempted network service yeah. mesh technology yeah. tree, mm -hmm. um, I've actually been putting that up there, and it's it's not fully complete yet. I so if you if you're like, where is my thing? The answer <laughs> is let's get your thing there. Um, but I've also been trying to go and put links into them that go to the issues for the specs around them, um, so that if you're sort of like, okay, what are they doing around that? You can actually get to it. Um, so, do you think we can just link straight to this, or we can just uh, you know export this as a PNG and then just keep it in the repo and then we update it once we update this guy here? I mean, what what do you want to? to see? Yeah, I'm 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 up for embracing the healing power of Ant there. Um, so, I I, I think. You know, we can definitely do that. Um, you know, it depends on how how much we think this is going to be a live document for the next little bit. Um, hmm. You know, because my guess is that, you know, it will be a live document for a little bit because I know we, for example, we have specs that are not captured here and we have things captured here that don't have specs yet. Um, and we need to sort of figure out how those all fit in together. Um, so maybe starting by linking to here would be a good start. Also, like, you know, I, I tend to think in pictures and some other people think better in terms of text. Um, so it might be worth bouncing off the documentation group to see if they have any opinions about how this might be better represented. Yeah. And also, is there, is there a way to tick off things here? Like, you know, <laughs> we already have the NSC monitor from what I know. Uh, no, we actually, I don't think we have the NSC monitor yet. That was the notion of an idea around resiliency V2. Um, yeah, I mean, we have uh, the monitor client for sure, but yeah, you might be right. Yeah, but we, we don't have like a, a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. sidecar that happens yet. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, I, I would definitely say like we could just get a little check checkbox image and attach them here as we complete things. Because um, I know I, there is some work underway on security. Um, I think there's some work starting to get underway on DNS. Um, you know, so, you know, the, there's, there's some forward progress. I was just talking to someone yesterday who may turn up in the community to start working on the sessions payload stuff. And, and I would love to, if there are people interested in contributing who wanted to, to sort of contribute to any of these areas, that would be super welcome. More the merrier. And then, like I said, there are some other things here that are not clearly represented, like, I know that there was a, a there's a very interesting conversation happening around um, possibly more sophisticated um, selection algorithms than round robin. Once you've got a class of candidates, um, and that could be super interesting as well. So how, how how do you do do, do we have because uh, the specific ask from Dan was like three to six months. So do you see these things through three, three to six months? Because uh, it's probably stretches no, a think, little bit far. Yeah, I, I I definitely think for a lot of these things, um, you know, like security, interdomain, probably all the way through hardware next. I think it's probably stuff we're gonna want to do in the next three to six months. But like everything, it depends on who turns up interested in working on what in the community. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is always, this is the age old question of open source projects and people asking them for roadmaps. And the answer is sort of, it depends on who shows up and what they're interested in. Yeah. Right? I don't know what was your experience last summer, but at least the Northern Hemisphere goes mostly on vacation for the next couple of months. <laughs> uh, so well, I, I tend to refer, well, in the US, we just don't take vacation. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, but, but Europe, Europe is a saner and more civilized place. And so um, the, my only real complaint with general European sanity around summer, summer vacation is it would be convenient for the rest of the world if you would all take the same month off in the summer instead of just veering it across the continent. No, um, we take the same three months in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is a little exhausting in North America to figure out which country takes which month off in the summer. Um, Look, I get standardized. I get eight hours of vacation every day. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean um, clearly your employer is very liberal in the U.S. I only get <laughs> um, so. Okay. I mean, we we 
like as you said, next three, three, three months. This means like by September, we you think we will have some of these? I know that you know there are various people working on various things. I mean, I'm I'm just seeing I mean, whatever gets... happens with the work group with group group co attendance. Like uh, it's like people. I guess that are traveling or taking time off. So we probably will get some low on attendance too. That's yep. what I, I, think. I think that actually, I think that actually is probably true. So, I mean, here's the thing I would suggest, like this actually gets to a higher level conversation, which is, do we want to do time-based releases or do we want to do feature-based releases? Um, mm -hmm. I tend to, in open source communities, I tend to prefer time-based just because if you go feature-based, then all kinds of weird stuff can happen because of varying participation. Um, but I, I'm curious what other people's opinions are. Well, I mean, we had an attempt to to, to uh, align the, our releases around KubeCon. Uh -huh. These are kind of, you know, six months, so yeah. I don't know. Six months is a little long. I mean, how do folks feel yeah. about quarterly releases? Um, how does how do folks feel about that? I mean, we want to try and make sure that at least one of them lines up with the KubeCon stuff at each six month poll. But um, generally, quarter releases is often a good cadence. Yeah, and thanks for putting it as ideas because I think we're just spitballing right now. Mm. <clears throat> uh, and please know, like time-based releases, my experience is particularly as projects grow, they become sort of roughly time-based. Um, yeah, yeah. Kubernetes is roughly quarterly, um, but you know, eventually you get better at hitting your time. I know, for example, like the Eclipse project has like for 15 years hit its dates. Um, <laughs> a very complicated show of, of things that go into it. So. Looks like we got some comments in the chat on liking time-based. Okay. <laughs> Conference-driven developments. I, I love that term, Nikolai. I had not heard it before, but it so describes my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't practice agile. I practice conference-driven development. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then it's just a matter of having uh, conferences more often, right? I mean, like, there should be more conferences in the summer. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, see, they would, except that, that that varying parts of Europe are on vacation at that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 as I said, I, I radically agree with the, the civilized civilized behavior in Europe. It's a little rough when it's varying months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, so uh, around the roadmap, I think that, that we more or less are agreeing on what should be there. Maybe there's no point into continuing to, to put it up front again, uh, like to put it on the on the discussion here. Maybe we should try to converge maybe tomorrow's work, uh, the documentation call on how we want to expose this to the world in our repo, etc., etc. I think it's probably worth keeping open uh, uh, you know, a, a very simple item for roadmap editions. Yes. Yeah. We'll have yeah. the impression that yeah. there's a really good place every week for them to come in and say, hey, I think we should probably do this. Um, yeah. You know, because I, I don't ever want it to feel like, oh, the roadmap is set in stone for the last next nine months. So come back then. That, that I don't ever want to happen. Yeah. Oops. Uh, oh, okay. So we actually we don't have anything else on the. So maybe maybe I can bring up a, a topic. So uh, if no one else objects, I mean it's not on the on the here. I, I think that I finished the agenda is whatever someone scribbles down on the agenda. So feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I spoke uh, lately to a guy that he has very much experience in uh, you know bringing up open source projects etc etc I and mean, this could be okay uh, essentially it was a guy from harbor project so so it's a project that actually graduated since yet etc so we're, when we're speaking when we're kind of talking uh, and um, 
he gave me an advice like if you want to move to the next level like you know from sandbox to um, uh, incubation project the one thing that you should like look for and try to move forward is adoption like someone should start using this in whatever form like there should be someone maybe i mean optimistically a couple of them <laughs> but okay let's let's say that we want one guy for for the time being so mm -hmm. i think that we should kind of open the discussion of who that guy could be like at least in what domain and what we want to see and try to look for someone to really i don't know earn it somewhere I know that it's kind of early. Maybe it will take us, you know, maybe next couple of release cycles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But maybe if we start discussing about identifying who that guy could be, oh. I don't think it's too early to start talking about. It. I think it's actually really good to start talking about. It, it may take us a, a little bit more time to actually get something they they yeah. that deploy. But I mean, in, 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 it's almost like a user per, uh, a, a user persona kind of conversation, yeah. right? Like, what are the kinds of users? Because we, we've had some discussion about use cases, but you sort of look at user personas. And, and so, for example, we know that um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here for enterprises for sort of multi-cloud, hybrid cloud behavior, right? So we've, we've got a whole bunch of stuff under enterprise customers. And then we also know from our friends in the tug that we have some SPs that have similar kinds of problems that they need to solve for cloud native NFE. So that's that's two really good groups right now, right there off the top, and I, I suspect that you'll get sub personas under that um, that we can work out as personas, um, and then just sort of figure out what's the minimum viable set of things that those personas need mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to do deployments. Um, <clears throat> I think that's probably good advice. I mean, and Harbor's advice is excellent here. I know, for example, one of the requirements to become an incubation project is we have to have at least three deployments that are willing to stand up publicly and say, yes, I've deployed this. Yeah. Um, uh, at least my, my, my approach currently and what I'm trying to do and push with, um, with Taylor and uh, the other guys from CNF Testbed is like, if we have this very first, like continuously tested and verified deployment within CNF Testbed, it's kind of an you know, old jump start or something that you can refer to, and I don't yeah, know. I think that's I think that's excellent. Um, I, I think that's an excellent start, particularly for the SP customer persona, um, and and I would love to see that come together. You know, it, it, hopefully in, in small, quick steps, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can do a lot with it. I'm I'm sort of thinking in terms of like what's the smallest thing that we could do with it. So um, I was I was looking at the at the CNCF dashboard. I think that the guys from Vogue should should, you know, should probably tell us. But would it make sense if we want to run something there? I mean, what's the status of the CN? Uh, I saw that the latest Kubernetes is 1.13. Is it something that, that people are looking into? I mean, does it make sense for us to also try to go there with some, I don't know, whatever? Uh, this is Watson. Yeah, the dashboard we're going down from graduated and incubating down oh. a, a certain path, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's too early for us, okay. Yeah. Ideally, at some point, there's gonna be screens where we would show um, use cases and integration point projects. That's not something that's seen there, but it's something that we've had kind of in, in the back of our mind. Um, yeah, interoperability type views and stuff. And I think at that point you could see something like NSM being used on a, for those use cases, similar to what's seen in the CNF test bed as far yeah. as that. Yeah, yeah. You would have a view and then maybe NSM would be running and in, in ideally with other CNCF projects so that you say here is, here's a, kind of a reference platform where you have these the different software running yeah, yeah. and a demo of, of that and and then some type of integration test that go mm -hmm. through the whole platform yeah no, be, be, because we actually have in the examples now we have envoy enablement on top of you know uh, nsm which is kind of in line with this and also uh, as you said uh, we have cnf testbed but uh, it's mostly tackling the specific use cases and 
if we want to have some adoption, I mean, this will probably be, I mean, we have probably higher chances in some kind of enterprise-ish type of workloads. So we'd better have something that we can demonstrate that this works in a verified way, not something that we keep in our own CI on stage, uh, you know, uh, deployments, et cetera, but something that can be exposed more, more, I don't know, openly. And, you know. I, I think um, as far as something that would be seen sooner would be on the CNF test bed. And if we can come up with, functional type use cases where we say here's different um, parts how they fit together in a something similar maybe to what the ONAP VCB use case is it's trying to show a, a specific type of functionality that's desired so if if there's something that you or anyone else <clears throat> um, think would be really interesting to a larger group or a specific group who may want to contribute then mm -hmm. we can design that um probably building off of stuff that we've been talking about the last week and a half yeah 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 okay good makes sense i mean because well, like when you say cnf test but it kind of implies cnf they'll call uh sneaky networking people <laughs> 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 That comment is going to be with us for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, I don't. I don't know of a, an area where the the naming or whatever is open. So not vendor specific to, or project specific, and not. I mean, e even the CNF testbed in my mind should probably be renamed to something like cloud native networking testbed. And we're not work because yeah, we, I, I would be super cautious with that renaming, just because right now there's a huge gap between what SP means by that and what enterprise means by that. One yeah. that we're hoping to bridge, and so you know what what SP is asking for literally is completely alien right now in the minds of the enterprise guys, so they might get a little bit agitated. I understand, and yeah, I don't I don't want to definitely don't want to rename right now. I'm just. Um, highlighting I agree that the naming doesn't work for everybody probably just if we can start documents and the conversations with who's the persona and the viewpoint that we're taking right now with whatever the demo commentaries use cases are then it'll be helpful for everyone um, yeah So we're hitting the uh, top of the hour. Are there any uh, last things we want to talk about before we uh, before we conclude? No. Great. Well, with that, uh, thank you everyone for attending, and we will see you all again next week. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye bye. Yep. Cheers.